Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about one thing um, uh, that uh, is very important in the um, numerical integration in, in, in general, and we will see how we can deal with it in MATLAB. Uh, so this is the uh, integration of coupled equations or um, solving simultaneous equations uh, or simultaneous differential equations. Uh, and this is one thing that we, we, we see a lot in, in our uh, chemical engineering applications. Um, before we go ahead and see how we deal with these kind of equations, I'm gonna go first with a simple case and then we'll see how we can make it more difficult so we can understand what uh, is going on. So the case that I'm gonna uh, discuss is a very, very famous case, which is the plug flow reactor. We talked about this before in the very first video in the integration. And here we're gonna go into the equations uh, kind of in more details. And this is, uh, uh, when you do the modeling of the plug flow reactor, you take, as we mentioned before, because it's a, a distributed parameter system, so you take a, an increment of this uh, of this reactor and do the balance equation over it, and then integrate over the whole length. And this is what we have here. If you do the the uh, um, the material balance or mass balance on uh, the increment, you'll end up with this term, which is Q, dc, Q is the flow rate, dc is the change in concentration, and this is the change in concentration inside the increment. Um, and this is equals to the negative Ra, dz, and this term is the uh, production or consumption of the species uh, due to the reaction. And then you'll end up with this dc by dz equals negative raq. And, and this is assuming that this is a cons consumption. This is a, a reactant, not a product. Uh, so this is the equation that how it will look like. A is the cross-sectional area of the tube or the, the, uh, the reactor. Um, and we said that q is the, the flow rate. Um, R is the rate of reaction. C is the concentration. And z is the length. So this is the change of the concentration with the length. Um, and we assume that it's a first order reaction, uh, so the kinetics will look like this, R equals K multiplied by C, and K will take the Arrhenius form, which is K node exponential of negative E over RT multiplied by C. And by, by plugging this into here, you'll end up with this shape of the equation, and this, how, this is how you can calculate um, the concentration profile in the reactor. Um, so let's let's first go ahead and see how we can deal with it in MATLAB. I, I have some numbers here. Um, uh, oops, yeah, I have these numbers here. Uh, just uh, these are just random numbers that I came up with that will give some reasonable results. So they might not be real numbers actually. Um, so. Um, this is what I'm gonna do in my lab now. So I, I, I have everything written here just to save time. Um, these are the givens, so I can, I can just uh, write givens here. And I put it as a function. Um, it's exactly like the function handle that what we did before. It's C as a function of Z and C. The Z is the independent variable, C is the dependent variable. And I have K equals K node, um, which is, um, this exponential negative e over rt and then this c equals negative k multiplied by a um, over q multiplied by c so this is everything so now you can use this equation uh, or, or this function to calculate or, or pre uh, yeah to calculate the the concentration profile so i'm going to ask it to give me the z and the concentration uh, using the ode45 function at the PFR, um, and then I'll have the, the time span or, or the length span from 0 to 10, for instance, assuming that's 10 meters, and I will start with initial concentration of 50, um, and this is what I'm going to get. So you can see that this is the Z from 0 to uh, 10, and the concentration from 50 down to 22 point something. Um, I, I'm, I'm usually not very... Uh, interested in, in looking at the numbers, so I'm, I'm gonna let it plot Z versus C, um, and I would make the, um, um, what else I need to, um, 
yeah, this, this is enough. I, I don't need to waste time on the X labels and Y labels now. So this is how the profile looks like. Of course, you can you can pre like like take a look at the the same the same profile if you change any of these inputs here. So let's assume that you will make the the um, the area bigger, for instance, um, or not the area. Let's let's assume it will we'll work at at higher energy. Uh, higher, higher temperature. I'm sorry. So if you if you do the same at higher temperature, you'd see that it is. Um, I didn't save it. I think maybe 600 is not that different. So if I make it 1000, so the 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 last concentration is 20. So now if I increase the temperature, um, I think I need to close this plot first before I plot a new one. And this is the mistake. Um, so yeah, it's um, I, it doesn't look like it's making a lot of difference now. But anyway, let's let's see if I change the K. K will have will have a big big uh, big impact. So I make it four, which means that I'm I'm increasing the rate of reaction four times. So you'd see that it it went from 22 down to almost 10. So this is one thing that I can predict, and I know that this this is uh, this is true. Um, let's, uh, for instance, change the area to 0.3, um, and then you'd see that it went even, even smaller. Okay, so so I can I can now see how the the parameters that I change affect the system. So this is assuming that the reaction is or, or the system can be just described by the uh, concentration change with the length. But actually, there are some other parameters that might be of very important uh, effect um, on, on the system. For instance, assume that, let's say that this reaction is exothermic reaction. And if it's exothermic, then the temperature will, will change with, uh, with the distance as the reaction proceeds. So the temperature will increase, and this will affect the rate of reaction and the concentration. So uh, in, in this case, I cannot just describe the system using the concentration uh, equation. I can. I, I need to put some other equation that describes the temperature change, and this is what you would get when you um, uh, do energy balance. So it, it will be just similar uh, uh, derivation. I didn't just put it here for for the sake of time. But what you will say that energy in, um, which is MCP delta T n equals MCP delta T out plus the accumulation, and this is the accumulation would be R multiplied by delta H R, which is this term R multiplied by delta H R, <coughs> and this is MCP multiplied by delta T. So it, it, it's going to be kind of the same thing. So now we need to solve these two equations simultaneously. You see that the concentration is appears in both and the temperature appears in both. So both equations affect each other. So I now need to take this into consideration. So um, let's let's go back to uh, our our Excel file. Uh, I mean the the MATLAB, and then I will make a new file. Um, and here we will see what is the difference that we will face when we deal with coupled equations. Um, so when we deal with coupled equations, we need to tell MATLAB that these are, it's, it's not just an equation, uh, we need to tell MATLAB that this is uh, two coupled differential equations. Um, and this, this is a thing that it must be made clear to MATLAB before we start. And to do this, we need to tell him that this is DC. Okay, so this is, this D tells MATLAB that this is a differential, this, these are differential equations. I'll call it PFR2, uh, for instance. The givens will be the same, so I'm not going to make any change to these. Um, but there is one other thing here that is very important, that you need to tell MATLAB how many equations are you going to solve together. And to do this, you have to create a matrix. And, and again, just, just remember what we did before when we solved um, uh, nonlinear algebraic, uh, I mean, uh, nonlinear algebraic equations simultaneously. We, we, if we have x, y, and z, we call them a matrix x, and then it was x1, x2, and x3. If you don't remember that, please go back and, and uh, check this video in the series. So um, I have to tell him that this DC is a matrix that consists of two um, two locations or two slots. So it's it's zeros of two and one. 
this this doesn't have anything to do except to tell MATLAB that we have two equations. So he knows that DC, uh, which is the, the, the matrix that contains the differential equations, is two rows and one column, so we have two equations. Okay. Um, and now we need to <coughs> uh, make sure that we understand that when, when we look at these two equations here, uh, we are writing them in another way that is easy for MATLAB to understand, okay? <clears throat> uh, and this is by uh, saying that this DC that we, we just made is the uh, matrix of the dependent variables. So this is DC1 and this is DC2. So, so it's, it's important to, to keep in mind that the concentration now is called C1 and the temperature now is called C2. Uh, it, it, it's important to, to understand that. Uh, how will this affect us? Because now I will not put a value of temperature uh, because it's a variable now, it's not, it's not a constant. And I will put it as C2. C2 does not mean it's concentration, but this is the second thing. You can call, call this as X, Y, Z, M, whatever the symbol that you want to put, but you understand that this contains the concentration and the temperature. Um, and this is the first thing uh, that we will will do here. And then we we will just write the two equations. Um, I will call this DC1. This is the first equation. And I understand that DC1 means DC by DZ. This is going to be the same. Um, I'm, I'm not going to change anything because it's, it's the same. But the only difference that this C cannot be kept like this it is C1. And again for DC2 is negative k multiplied by a um, which is this so this is k and then I multiply this by dhr divided by um, ncp multiply this by c1 you will notice that C2 is already there in, in, in the two equations, which is the temperature, because it is uh, included in the K uh, term. So now <clears throat> I'm going to save it as PFR2. And now the, the, the function should be ready for me to, um, to solve numerically. And um, I'm going to just clear uh, everything and start over. Uh, what we're going to have is the C. At Z and C, call it C, whatever I'm, I'm calling it X for instance, and this is ODE 45 of uh, the function that's called PFR2. Um, the time span, which is the length, I'm start from 0 to 10. And for the initial conditions, I must have two initial conditions, not only one, because I have two uh, dependent variables. So the initial conditions would be 50 uh, for the concentration, and let's say 600 for the um, temperature, and let's see what we get. So what we get now is, again, from 0 to 10 for the Z, and for the X, we have, we have two, two numbers. So now let's um, let's uh, try to. Um, I think I have this. This is a very big number, so I'm I'm gonna change it so you can have some reasonable numbers because the temperature is getting really really high now. Um, um, anyways, let, let, let's look at it and see. Um, all these numbers are just uh, some fake numbers, so it, it doesn't really mean anything uh, important. So uh, what I'm gonna do is to plot y y. So I have in primary and secondary axis, Z versus concentration, the first one, which is all the, the rows and the first column, and Z versus the concentration, which is the now the, the temperature, not the concentration. Um, and now let's, um, what, oh, I call it X, I'm sorry. This X is the concentration, and this is the temperature. <coughs> and now it is... Uh, there. So, so we see here from this profile that the concentration decreases and the temperature increases and this is what I, I should expect because this is an exothermic reaction. Maybe if I make the heat of reaction a uh, little smaller, um, I shouldn't have, um, oops, I'm sorry, um, I shouldn't have the temperature increasing that much. So it, it reaches 1200 um, 
Celsius, which is, uh, I mean Kelvin, which is very, very high. So maybe the heat of reaction could be like 20. Um, and then re-plot. Um, and the temperature reached 800 and something, which, which is makes sense if I change the heat of reaction, then I should get um, lower temperatures. Um, I, I can now uh, see, uh, I, I reached the concentration of almost 20, 27, something like this, because this is red on the left axis. So if, if I increase the rate of reaction, um, then uh, I should expect that the, the concentration would be less and the temperature would be higher. And this is what we should expect. Of course, this is a very kind of simple example because you can make it even more complicated or more complex if you have cooling or if you have a uh, reversible reaction or if you have a pressure effect on the, on the kinetics. This will make the problem more and more complex. But at least um, the point that I want to make is to understand how you can tell MATLAB that you have two differential equations that you want to uh, solve simultaneously. And it's important because this is the DC equal uh, equal zeros is one thing that I, I used to forget for a long time and I get uh, very confused and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what is the problem and this is the only problem here. Um, again, this DC and making sure that you understand that these are parts of the uh, dependent variables matrix and you have to call every one with its location in the matrix is important because sometimes it's confusing when you um, have three or four parameters you can you can change one or put one instead of the other so it's important to understand how we deal with these kind of equations and um, I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye